Do you keep getting skip stitches or have trouble finding the right needle for the right job? Or can't tell which needle's which because the writing's too small? Can't get into your needle packet? Or do you forget which needle you've used for which, which job? Keep watching and I've got some solutions to your problems. Hi, my name's Sam and this is my channel Frugalissimo where I talk about all things sewing. And today is day 25 of 100 days of sewing. Today I'm going to talk about uh, why your machine might be skipping stitches before you start fiddling about with the tension knobs and, and what have you. Uh, there's a couple of things that you can do and a little project at the end to keep your needles tidy. First of all though, I would like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. I've had a few new subscribers and um, I'm very grateful for everyone who comes and watches these videos. And if you want to subscribe and get notifications, there's a little bell below. If you click that, it will tell you when I've got new videos up. I'm recording these videos now, uh, just publishing them on a Wednesday and a Friday. On a Sunday, I'm doing uh, reviews and plans and uh, things like that. So on to today's video. Maybe your machine has been skipping stitches and you can't understand why. And it's nine times out of ten, it is due to your sewing machine needle. And that could be either because you've got the wrong sort of needle in it, or it could be that the needle's blunt. One of the very first videos that I published for the 100 days of sewing was talking about uh, things that you need to get sewing. And I went through a list of just nine or ten very basic things that you need to get sewing and obviously your sewing machine's one of them. And one of the other videos I made was about um, getting sewing machines second hand. Now perhaps if you've got your sewing machine second hand by whatever method, there was already a needle in that sewing machine. What I didn't mention in my uh, things that you need is uh, machine needles and the right needle for the job. And if you've inherited a sewing machine, uh, probably already had a needle in it, that needle could have been there 10 years. When I got my first sewing machine, uh, there was a needle in it and I sewed with that needle for a very long, long time. Uh, I got skip stitches, I got all sorts. You know, every now and again, I'd take it back to the repair shop. It'll come back working perfectly. I had no idea about changing needles. I really honestly did not know that you had to change your sewing machine needle and I suspect there's a few people out there uh, that are in the same position. So first of all I've got a, a question for you. How long do you think uh, a sewing machine needle will last in your machine? Leave me a, a, a comment below and, and let me know how long you think uh, a machine needle is supposed to last and I'll tell you in a little bit, uh, I'll give you a chance to, to put me a comment below and then I've got a few things towards the end of the video that might surprise you. So your stitches might be uh, skipping, they might look a little bit wiggly, they might be puckering or snagging or your um, thread might start shredding and or your machine might start making a strange kind of almost a clunking sound. All those things are down to either a blunt needle or the wrong needle in, in your machine for the project that you're working on. Schmetz, uh, who uh, manufacture needles, these people here, not sponsored, um, they advise that a sewing machine needle should last you for eight hours. And to be quite honest, being the cynic that I am, I thought, that's a way of them getting me to buy more needles because it lasts longer than eight hours. But the surprising thing is that you could be sewing for eight hours or you could be making something for eight hours, but you're not actually sewing for eight hours. So they do actually last a lot longer than what they say. Uh, and a couple of years of experience with sewing will tell you that um, you can hear on your machine when that needle is, is getting blunt. So the clunking sound is your machine telling you that the, the needle's getting blunt. Use your own judgment, uh, but 
don't ignore that clunking sound. And the reason you don't ignore it is because a blunt needle will then go on to um, possibly, potentially ruining your fabric. If you've got, especially a viscose or something like that, um, I've got a, a very fine viscose in this, this Melilo shirt here that I've been sewing. This, this very fine viscose. And I've heard a few people with viscose, um, sewing with viscose, where it, it almost, when your needle goes through it, the, the, it almost um, pulls on the threads within the fabric and that's usually the wrong, either the wrong needle or a blunt needle. So whilst I've got the Melilo here beside me, uh, I've got another question for you. This Melilo took me four and a half hours to sew. Leave me a comment below uh, and let me know how long actual sewing time you think was involved in actually making this Melilo. Um, I, I, I did it as an experiment just to see how long because I was quite surprised by the actual results. So a four and a half hour project, how much sewing, actual sewing at the sewing machine, not the serger or anything like that, how much actual sewing do you think is involved in making this? And I will tell you at the end. I'm going to start off with uh, very briefly giving you the anatomy of a needle. You can see on there you've got a flat side and you've got a rounded side and that is quite significant in home sewing machines. Um, the, top of the, the top of the needle is the shank and that's, that's the bit with the flat and the rounded bit in and that goes into your sewing machine. Then you go down the needle, which is the shaft of the needle. There is a groove down there. And you can't, you can't, I've never been able to see this, but I can feel that with my fingernail. And each different size needle has a different width of groove. And that's where your thread will go down. And then obviously you've got your eye of your needle and you've got the point of the needle. And if you flip it round, there is a little bit of a dint just before you get to the eye of the needle and that is called hokala, hokala. It's a German word, I'm just probably butchering it. So there's a scarf at the back, just before you get to the eye, there's a scarf, not a scarf that you put around your neck, a scarf. And it's just like a dent in the back of the needle. And that H on your, on your box there, is what it is referring to, and that means it's a home so it doesn't H doesn't mean it's home sewing, it's it's this German word that refers to it being a home sewing needle, and it essentially like allows a bobbin to come up and hook the thread through. And you need to be looking out for that. It's not on all packets. Uh, I've just had a look through my prim and my um I've got some classy ones here. Um but it's a clue. So these universal ones here, they've got a H and that's what the, it means. So second interesting fact, which I didn't know. So these numbers down at the bottom here, so you've got 7010, you've got an 8012, you've got a 9014, and this isn't all the numbers, but these numbers mean the same thing. It's just two separate ways of measuring. So you'll never get a 7012 or a 7014. You will always get a 7010 or, a 7, or an 8012 or a 9014. And the lower number, the 10, 12, 14, is the US, or I think it was Singer that came up with the lower numbers. Um, and the higher number is actually a measurement of the, um, the size of the tip of the needle. So it's like an 80th of a millimetre or a 70th of a millimetre. They don't, they don't mean two different things. They mean exactly the same thing. It's just two different uh, measurement systems. And the, and the 130705, these are the most commonly used needle, needles for home sewing machines. So if you've got some needles, like some, I found some stray needles. Um, I, I inherited some needles and I, I had no idea what they, they were about but some strange numbers on the back there. And I kept thinking that the, they weren't right. Uh, and I think these are probably industrial needles. 
when I've looked at them, they are rounded at the top. So there's no flat shank on there at all. Uh, so these are absolutely no good for me at all. And they are actually shorter, slightly shorter than a normal needle as well, if I just hold a normal needle up. So I've got them even at the top there, so you can see that they're ever so slightly shorter by about half a centimetre or so. And I've got a little story for you. When I was looking through all my needles, I thought, I haven't got a great deal of needles left. I've got one or two of each size, so I'll order, some, I'll order a pack um, online, our friend Amazon. And they sent me what they said was um, suitable for a domestic machine. And I thought, this is a good price. I'm getting all these needles. 200 needles, I think we got here for next to nothing. Uh, I'll put the price below because I can't remember the price that I paid for them. I've opened this package and they're all rounded. And um, if I put those in my machine, my machine will grab hold of it when, when I put it in, it will grab hold of it. But there's no way that that is going to work correctly in my machine. Number one, I've got a, an automatic threader and it will, if I don't have that lined up properly, it, it won't go through the, the eye of the needle. And number two, there's no, there's no way of getting that groove in the right position for the thread to go down. Uh, so these are actually industrial needles that they've sold me. Absolutely no good for a domestic machine at all, so don't be sucked into it. So these are going back to Amazon. Um, so that's just a little tale of caution, shall we say. <laughs> Don't, don't buy cheap off Amazon because you're going to end up having to send it back probably and don't be tempted to put them in your machine. I, I mean, be it on your head if you do, but I, I wouldn't put those in my machine um, because there's no way that the, it's going to line up correctly. So Schmetz have got lots of different um, needles for a different job. So you've got your embroidery. I'm not going to go through, through them all because it would take too long. But you've got um, one specifically for top stitching, one specifically for uh, like sewing with jeans, embroidery needles, ones that even if you want to, to uh, use metallic. And obviously you stretch. Then they've got the colour code. They've got the colour coding system for different si types. And then they've got a colour code the different sizes. So you've got number 60s which are suitable for silks, number 70s suitable for lightweight fabrics, number 80s for medium weight fabrics, number 90s would be suitable for medium heavyweight fabrics, 100s heavyweight fabrics and 110 for upholstery and then 120 would be your denim. So that's it in a, not, in a nutshell. Uh, those are just the higher numbers and you almost always in my experience have both numbers on there and then I'm going to put uh, a link to the colour codes as well. So you've also got different needles for like wing needles, leather needles, uh, you've got your triple needles, your double needles for uh, doing your double top stitching. There are a lot of different needles but I was really specifically wanting to talk about why your machine, before you started messing about with it, would be potentially skipping stitches and that is nine times out of ten because you've got the wrong needle in your machine. So just double check what needle you've got. If you've got a second hand machine and uh, somebody said oh I just put a new needle in it, you don't know what needle it is, you don't know whether it's right for, for, your, for the job that you're doing. I just keep a little, little tub at the side of my sewing machine here for blunt needles. They just go in a sharps box then eventually. So you'd be surprised at how many sewing problems are actually caused by either a blunt needle or the wrong needle for the job. So you'll get skipped stitches, you'll get uh, potentially broken needles, um, maybe you've run over a pin and it hasn't broken your needle. Um, that's why people say don't uh, sew over the, over the top of your pins. You might have got, think you've got away with it. I was doing something the other day where I accidentally sewed over a, a pin I could hear the difference in the sound of the of the machine sewing. Thought nothing about it, and then when I looked at the work that I was working on, it it was clearly it had clearly blunted my needle. So don't sew over your pins. Um, quite apart from the fact that if a, if you get a, a piece of broken needle flying off and it goes into your eye or into your machine, even you know, oh 
you know, the damage that it can cause, just little things where you think you've got away with it. So don't sew over your pins. And yeah, puckers are damage to your fabric. So it, it is quite an important thing is having the right needle. You can get a little app for your phone, which is a, a pocket guide to the right fabric and right uh, needles. So I'll leave a link to that below, uh, just to so you can keep it um, to hand. So uh, back to my question at the beginning of the video, how long do you think I, a four and a half hour project, how much, how long do you think is actual sewing time? Well, when I was sewing this Melilo, um, this took me four and a half hours, and I actually wrote down every little time I came to the machine, and it was one hour and 25 minutes. So although uh, Schmetz and all your other needle companies are saying that you should only use a, a needle for eight hours, that actually equates to probably about five shirts uh, obviously, if you're a quicker sewer than me, uh, you might you might get a lot more more out of it. it quite surprised me did that that uh, your actual sewing time is really only about a third of a project. Obviously, depending on what what you're doing. So a couple of final final things that you might not have known. Number one is that you can get needles for your overlocker. I had the same needles in my overlocker for years and years. These don't have the 13705 on them, they say ELX, these are prim ones. So if you've got ELX and it doesn't say overlock, that's, that's probably what you've got there. And different sizes. I'm assuming these are universal because I never change my overlock needle if I'm using knit fabric, for example. I just keep the same ones in. Uh, you're probably supposed to, so let me know below if you, if, you, if you do, if you change your needles every time you do a different um, fabrication on, on your overlocker. The other thing is, if you've got some old needles or they're not our, uh, our friend Schmetz, so a lot of needles have got the numbers here on the, on the shank, you won't be able to see it through the screen now. Uh, but if you've got an iPhone, you've probably got a, a magnifier on your iPhone and you can actually see it through the iPhone. So what I'll do is insert a picture of, of what I've done on the iPhone, just in case you've got one uh, that you've, you're, not, you're not sure what, what size it is. They don't all have them, but some of them do. My last little tip is opening these suckers. <laughs> it's funny what you don't know that other people don't know, if you know what I mean. I wasn't aware that people struggled opening these things. So you slide it up. So can you see, just sliding it up there. Just slide, it doesn't pull off, you just slide it up. And then you just pull this bit back here. This one comes all the way. And then you can pull your needles in and out there. So that's a prim, and Schmetz is exactly the same. You just slide it up like that, pull that back, and that reveals your, your needles, and then you can put them in and out. You don't need an hammer. <laughs> you don't need an hammer to smash it. Uh, so let's get on to the little project that I've got for you. So quite some time ago, I came across a little tutorial by Portia Laurie of The Makery, uh, and it was just a way of keeping your needles uh, in order. And it's just this. And it's just a very, very simple make. It'll take you less than 20 minutes to make. You can make it as fancy as you want. You can you have used felt here. This is something that I just picked up in the children's um, crafting section of my local, I don't know, somewhere like Home Bargains or somewhere like that, a couple of years ago. And it's not proper felt, it's, it's crafting, crafting felt, but it's not, as you can see, it's quite solid. And I've just used, these are like A4 size sheets. I've just used one of those and cut strips and sewn them on. So yeah, it's just that you can use anything you like. You can use quilting cotton, as, as long as this, this backing's quite stiff. And the beauty of, of the using felt, if you want to use felt, is that you can bob your use needles in like that, uh, so that you know that they've been used. 
uh, that was one of the problems that I came up before against before, is that I knew there'd been I knew there'd been used, but I didn't know know what sort of needle it was. But if you file it with the ones that you've got, then um, you, you know which one's which. So I will just show you how to how to do that. So this for project, you just need two pieces of uh, crafting felt like this, or you can use. Um, anything at all as long if you can if you just want to use a, a quilting cotton or something like that put some stiff interfacing or some uh, some sort of wadding on the back just to make the the back stiff or denim you could use denim or something a bit a bit thicker that's got a bit of body to it so all you need is your two bits of felt something to measure with uh, and something to cut with and something to mark with these are kind of A4 size, but I'll give you the measurements in case you want to cut something down. So that is 11 and 3 quarters inches. You can do it whatever you want, 12 inch, and that's an 8, eight and a quarter inch across. And I'm just going to use the width of this one, so there's very little cutting. I'm going to use these needle cases as a guide to how big. When Portia made them on her blog, she put them in upside down so she could see the the numbers. You can make it fancy, like you could put some embroidery on there with the, with the numbers on if you want. Or you could say, put a U for Universal on there. You can make it as fancy as you want. I'm just keeping it simple for this particular project. So my, my little pockets are an inch and a quarter wide. So there we've got Four strips, place one at the bottom, and then just use your ruler to even it out however you want it. What you don't want is for these to stick out too far. So I've got one, one at one inch, one at three inches, one at six inches. And then you want a biggish gap at the top. So one at nine inches, all nice and even. Again, these are all decisions that you can make. You don't have to do it exactly these, these measurements. And then for mine, I made three wider ones because I've got some of these wide, wider uh, ones to go in and fit in nicely. And then I made the bottom two into four sections. Again, you can do that however you like. So once you've decided how you want the markings on, you're just going to sew from down the side, as close to the edge as you can, along the bottom, down the side again, and then down each of these marks as, as and when you want. These wider ones will just about go in there. Uh, so it depends on what size your, your particular needle packets are. So I'll come back when it's all sewn up. Like I say, you're just gonna sew around there and down there. So there we have it, all done. It took me less than 10, 15 minutes to do that. That's including all the cutting out and sewing. And that's one of those projects that um, I've been thinking, I, I, I must've thought about doing this about five years ago when I first saw it on Portia's um, blog, blog post. And it's a great little scrap buster, or if you've lost your sojo as they call it, um, to get your, ta your uh, sewing room organized. Uh, and really really practical and you can use it for other things as well you don't have to just put your needles in I've just thought about maybe you could put your bob you can make it a bit smaller and put your bobbins in and you know you make your strips a little narrower perhaps maybe you've got special buttons that are on a card that you want to keep together something like that great for any little sewing knickknack so you can bob just a bit of ribbon at the back like that fasten it at the back somehow just a put a couple of stitches in the back there to hang it up so I use this bulldog clip I mean it's not pretty <laughs> it's a, but it does a job and it, 
it's really, one of these really useful little things that it's like, why didn't I do that earlier? So leave me a comment below if you can think of any other uses. Different sizes, you could put pens in, or your little sewing tools. You know, if you, if you did some long thin strips, you could keep all your little sewing tools in there. Not much good at that size, but you get the drift. So I think it's really useful. Let me know if you're gonna make one. So there you go, with it all loaded up. That's the one that I've been using. Yellow and uh, white one, I shall find a use for another use for that. I could perhaps keep pins or buttons or something like that in it. Uh, so I think yeah, I think that's that's a really handy little thing to have in your sewing room. And that just lives up here. I've got some hooks up here. Like that. Just lives there. So that's it from me today. I hope you found something useful there. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful and leave me a comment below if you've got any hints and tips for uh, sewing machine needles and I will speak to you later. Thanks ever so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>